this. Multiple small ulcerations with nodular elevations containing amoebas, necrotic cells, and inflammatory debris with normal intervening mucosa is seen in this case of amoebic colitis. Lower gastrointestinal bleeding may be a presentation or a flare of inflammatory colitis. Continuous friable inflamed mucosa can be seen in this case of ulcerative colitis. Severe active Crohn's colitis is shown in this case with long, vaguely serpiginous, parallel ulcerations and jagged mucosa. Ulceration, friability, and telangiectasias are endoscopically apparent in this patient with a history of radiation exposure for prostate cancer. Diversion colitis occurs in a previously normal segment of colon after it has been surgically diverted from the fecal stream. Most diversion colitis is asymptomatic and is only discovered prior to restoration surgery. This patient, who had a colostomy for recurrent diverticulitis, however, presented with severe rectal bleeding from the Hartman pouch. Neoplasms account for about 13% of lower GI bleeding. Most colorectal adenomas do not cause severe bleeding until they become cancerous, such as in this case of an invasive rectosigmoid cancer hemorrhage that presented with bright red rectal bleeding. Active bleeding can be seen at a polypectomy site in the rectosigmoid colon. With continuous washing, a visible vessel can be seen at the periphery of the resection site. Arterial venous malformations, also referred to as angiodysplasias and vascular ectasias, account for approximately 10% of lower G.